Saudi on uh, Monday the uh, 20 30th, right? Monday the 31st day and we are uh, out here putting some long season wheat in a little bit different again seemed to be uh, a little bit of a theme so after the grazing barley last week we uh, got confirmation of a bit more rain coming and we did get six meals out of it right before we put that in we put some canola down on irrigated country where our corn will be next year get it in nice and early hopefully get it windrowed and off and harvested nice and early but uh, that's all finished about 160 hectares worth 170 hectares worth and now we're here down on um, some more irrigated country putting some long season wheat in this Annapurna variety it's a red wheat apparently and uh, first time growing it so we'll see how it goes but uh, I just wanted to go into a little bit more technical stuff than what we usually uh, try to do on this YouTube because there's farmers watching this all the time and it might be able to help someone so we're going to uh, variable rate control with the Borgold air setter so here we have our so we got old irrigation poly old irrigation is the uh, paddock green here and essentially we are putting on a rate from 55 kilos to 92 kilos of variable rate MAP so thought I'd just run into how to do it on this one um, you hit you've got your field set up here uh, it's all good and I've gone and made a new task here if you can see that it's hard to see on my little screen here and then I've gone into this you can do an existing configuration but when I did one um, for when I started to make one it asked me to uh, essentially add the source, the attribute, and which uh, tank I wanted to do, which was uh, tank 2. So in this case, I'm putting tank 2 out from 55 to 92 kilograms uh, per hectare. And you can see, sorry, on that map, uh, this is a lighter country. This is a heavier country here. And you can see if I go out a few things here, you can start to see the map as it's been made. Now my brother's made this with 100% um, sure on the name of the, uh, the program he uses. Uh, I'm going to have to look that up to find out what it is. But he's essentially used their yield data to correlate heavier yields. Where the heavier yields are, we're putting out more MAP essentially. This is only for one tank. I've actually got two tanks of MAP going out and for a little bit of a change of pace Something we did with the canola the other day was we put the some of the MAP out the scatter plates on the front with the urea. So that's a bit of a new thing for us as well. Um, we're going to do the same thing again today. You can see the zone I'm in here at the moment is 62 kilos. And the uh, one that's going out, the scatter plates, is tag 3, is 38 kilos. So I actually need to put that 40 just thinking about it there. 40 kilos going out there. So essentially this one will go up and down as the zones become, uh, as the uh, tractor goes in and out of the zones. And um, yeah, so a little bit of a new thing. We usually put all the MAP down with the seed because we're a single uh, shoot machine. But in this case, we've heard that the, uh, the canal yields can be affected by higher rates of MAP. So we're just putting some out in front with the urea um, on the scatter plates. I'll show you them in a second up close and the MAP is going out down the chute at a prescription rate. So that's, uh, that's what we're doing here today. Uh, I'll show you as it's going along. There's nothing overly complicated about uh, variable rate control, but it is another thing you're sort of gonna think about and set up and get ready. Uh, my brother does all the prescriptions on his um, computer and then essentially sends them to me on one of these USB sticks here, which we can plug into the top con, um, into the top con, so. Not overly hard to upload them. Next time I upload one, I'll take some video and add it along with this one. And um, yeah, well, I'll show you how it's done. But I'll go and show you these, um, I'll go and show you the scatter plates on the front so you can see what I'm talking about. We don't run a dual shoot machine. We only run a single shoot machine uh, for various reasons. 90% of it, uh, I would say, is just less complicated. 
Uh, there's not two things in the ground. You're not trying to dig so deep. Uh, they're not trying to get more soil through, which is a bit of a problem for our, um, uh, for, you know, trying to keep speeds up or down or whichever way you're trying to do it. Um, the more soil you throw you have, the worse issue you can have with your chemi chemicals and your, uh, your um, pre-sowing pre chemicals, essentially, your treflans, your avidex, those sorts of things. So, we, they, we come up with another system base that has sort of come with our strip tiller of uh, these scatter plates. So, they're from Boss Agriculture, they fitted them, they've got heads attached. And essentially it's just on a second set of tubes from the air seeder. There's nothing overly complicated about them. They're pretty low maintenance. But it does give you another option if you're not willing to go to dual shoot. To still get your air and in this case MOP applicated quite easily. But um, not have so much of the complexity or the, the, the issues associated with double shoot. Now, there's about a hundred buddy uh, farmers out there watching this going, oh, double shoot's not that bad. I agree, you know, there's, you know, horses for courses, it's, it's, not, um, it's not better or worse. Single shoot's not better or worse. Double shoot's not better or worse. They're just different. Same with disc machines. I have no issue with disc machines. They're just a different system. So if you have a single shoot machine and you are looking to do something like this, um, this is another option, the, the scatter plate system. I believe Borgo have a similar system. And I did say something else somewhere, it might have been Salford, I think, have a similar system for their uh, their independent um, tillers as well. That does a similar, similar job, but yeah, so essentially they're just spaced out. You can see they're slightly angled just to try and fill the gaps wherever they need to be. Sometimes it hits the tire, as you can see here. Um, yeah, there's a few options. Sorry about the wind noise here. And I'll just show you on our Borgo 9000 series cart, you can see we have two sets of auto section control. So this side here does the seed and the MOP that's going down the chute. And this side here does the urea and the other MOP. So section control for both very simple and uh, it's very effective it saves we, we used to just drive broadcast in front of the uh, cedar with a amazon spreader it was another bloke it was another job that needed to be done and more logistics so we just decided to go back to um to what with the with the inclusion of this 9000 series cart which is rather um large we can still get set sort of 100 hectares plus in a box full um we decided it was a good idea to just try and spread our urea out the front uh in this case we're doing 150 kilos so should work out good um as i said the mop at the shoot's a little bit different something new for the year and uh hopefully it should be quite effective anyway it's uh, anyone who's using that Borgot system may find that um prescription uh mapping and whatever useful Hopefully this is the year that, a lot, well this might be the year that a lot of people are using it because uh, being a little bit dry last year, um, everyone's just trying to save costs a bit. If you've got decent yield maps and you can make the prescriptions then uh, you probably should be doing it. Last couple of years not so critical for us, we just put a blanket heavy raid on and, and sent it because we've had pretty good yields but last year it was a little bit average from places it was dry in places it was wetter in places so the uh, the prescription MAP will save us a little bit of money in the long run hopefully see is our scattering here just doing a bit of a tube check there's MAP in there and underneath we have a little little pile of wheat and a little pile of MAP so everything's going good Pays to do a tube check even with blockage monitoring because it can detect when a hose comes out of the top but it can't detect when a hose comes out of the bottom which is more likely to be this bar when it folds up and they sometimes fall out so it pays to do them even with the blockage monitoring it pays to walk around and have a look before you start looking for loose bolts and all sorts of different stuff but the thing about this is if you walk along behind here you can generally see 
which you probably can't because it's a little bit far away on the camera here but pays to come and have a look make sure everything's coming out of every tube where it's supposed to be and then you're all sweet then also while I'm out here looking for bailing, uh, bailing twine I should say on the um, press wheels and wire here's our uh, that's our uh, map of the uh, variable rate control there. We are at 82 kilos. Just click back to 71 as I'm coming into the orange bit here. Seems to preempt it a little bit, which is good. So by the time it gets to that uh, orange zone, it should be there and hitting it at 71 kilos. So that's all working perfectly. Uh, we were a little bit worried about how that would go but uh, it has been very easy to set up and it works perfectly so no issues with the variable rate control going into good moisture here uh, it's just shy of an inch deep which is fine i'm only doing 70 hectares if i was a little bit more pedantic i'd go down maybe one more hole but considering the amount of moisture there uh, that's all right one more hole sorry for those playing at home is about one third of an inch so one centimeter essentially um if i was a little bit more pedantic we'd go down a bit more but for this uh, 76 hectares with good moisture it should be fine gonna come up really nice i think He's out here doing a little bit of spraying before the sowing here, seeding. He's got Treflan, Avidex, Terrador, Hasten, and Paraquat on board. Always very pretty come sowing time with the yellow coming out. Questions from the previous seeding video was, why are there so many trees left in your paddocks? Well, in the great uh, nation of Australia, someone made it illegal to just push them out as, as you like. You can only remove a certain amount per year. Um, in different spots you can pull out more. Um, it's a little bit of a funny one when it comes to legislation and actually removing trees. Uh, we don't like trees in the paddocks as much as anyone, but sometimes it's just what we have to do. In fact, uh, Narrow Plains or all of our farms together has around 3,000 trees across the whole across the whole of the um, of our farm. So if we were to remove them all, we would probably just go broke unless we bought our own excavator to do the job. Better get out of the way. I'm gonna get it right over. <laughs> The run over or hit with the chemical warfare here. Right, I better go do something. Get this cedar rolling. Out here yesterday, I got 15 hectares done over there, 26 hectares done here, and we had a few mechanical issues with the uh, 4450, so been stopped for a little while, but we're gonna jump back into it now. The nature of our uh, cedar width, we actually had to put boom extensions on the uh, all the Patriot sprayers that we have, and they uh, they tend to uh, they tend to um, uh, not be strong enough on the tips of the original boom to handle having the extra weight on there. So we go to a uh, painstaking amount of effort to uh, make them stronger, but just due to this spray being so new. We haven't had the chance to strengthen them and uh, unfortunately one of them failed. We had to weld it up this morning um, and strengthen it so we've done that job. Just uh, poor timing. Um, but better to be at the start of the uh, sowing when we're not under the pump yet 
as opposed to, you know, somewhere down near Mulwatha that's 30 kilometres away and we're not near a welder, so could be worse. But uh, yeah, anyway, we'll get back into it now. I've got plenty of other stuff going on on the farm, so it wasn't a, uh, wasn't a big worry. Out here trying to remember if I could fit between these two trees or not. Looks like I can just, but uh, I suppose to have a look if you're unsure. Yeah, we're good. So we're down here, finally into the canola, uh, down at our lease block rose neath, and we, we're just chucking some canola in. We had to burn this paddock because it was just a bit too thick. As you can see, there's a fair bit of uh, trash laid on the ground here, even after it's been burnt. So just trying to uh, get through it. As you can see, fairly wet, but doing the job very well. Anyway, plenty of time for sowing footage. I'll leave you with a little bit on the way out here. Um, I've got at least six weeks of sowing to do, or four weeks um, if we have a real crack. So don't think you're going to miss out on any sowing action. I'm just going to keep putting it up as I go, but I don't want to keep just chucking up sowing footage either because it's um, you'll get bored pretty quickly. Anyway, we'll see you all next week. Thanks for tuning in again. Remember, uh, find all your merchandise on the Narain Grain website if you don't know where that is the link's in the bio link's in the description and also you can just google Narain Grain and you'll find it we've got hats uh, hoodies a fair few hoodies are coming we've got some black hoodies coming and also uh, beanies for those cold weathers cold weather that's coming up <coughs> anyway have a good one see you all